All right. So we're just going to continue on with the unit circle and solving trigonometric equations. What is a really important element to understand is the use of the words approximate values versus exact values. An approximate value is a value generally obtained by a calculator or by mental math. 1 over 3 is equal to 0 0.33333. So that is approximately correct. Not exactly. Or another approximate value is pi is equal to 3.14159. Well, I think I got it wrong there. But anyways, that is also approximate value. Why is that? Because... Pi has an infinite number of decimal places, and no matter how hard we try, we cannot get it exactly. We can get it close, approximately, but never exactly. So the root of 5, this is exact. However, the right-hand side of that is approximate. The root of 5 is approximately 2.3. Two, three, six, zero, six, seven, nine, seven, seven. So these are all approximate values. So as the name implies, exact values are exact and cannot be expressed more precisely. For example, pi is pi. No matter how hard you try to write that down numerically, you'll never get it. Same with the root of five over two. The root of five is exact. There's no other way to communicate the idea of the square root of 5 exactly other than just simply putting the root of 5. So when you divide it by 2, it doesn't change the fact that this is still exact. The instant that you reach for your calculator and try to calculate that, that's approximate. So exact values, exact values are important when expressing expressing irrational numbers and irrational numbers are used extensively in trigonometry and higher level mathematics courses when a test is written without a calculator it necessarily implies that all solutions must be written in exact value all right let's do this we're going to express the following as an exact value. Pi plus 1. Pi plus 1 expressed exactly is, well, it's pi plus 1. You cannot express pi more exactly than pi itself. There's no other way. 4. The square root of 4. Well, we know that the square root of 4 is 2. Is it exactly 2? Yes, it is exactly 2. 1 plus the root of 5 over 2. Now, maybe I'm going to take a different approach. Notice how the root of 5 is an irrational number. So a rational number plus an irrational number divided by another rational number, the result will still be irrational. So therefore, this is exact value. It is already expressed an exact value. Can't get better than that. All right. Here we are. Evaluate. We are going to evaluate the sine of 45 degrees. Although it is not stated, I'm going to say it's going to be exact values. So, and the reason for that is special angles, the special angles around the unit circle, the 30 degree family, the 45 degree family, anyone that you look at the unit circle and can pick out the values. So special angles are exact values. If there's any angle where you're like, I don't know the sign of that, allow me to reach for my calculator, those are approximate. So I'm going to reevaluate the sign of 45 degrees. To interpret this question, 
it really means locate 45 degrees, which is right there, right? It's in quadrant number one. So we know that 30 is down there, 45 is there, and 60 is there for our special angles. Now, we want to know what the y value is at 45 degrees. The sine value of 45 degrees is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. So, I just said it. It's hard to put the pieces together, but I'm going to take a look at quadrant number 1. And I'm just going to, you should know your unit circle, very, very tough. But if I'm looking only at the sine values, the y values, we go from 0, and then this is the 30 degree angle, it's 1 half, and then we go up a little bit more, that's 1 over root 2, and then we go up a little bit more, and that's root 3 over 2. And the highest sine value is 1 at 90 degrees. So we'll, we see that we are in that placement. All right, good times. So now we're going to evaluate the tangent of 330 degrees. I'm going to draw my unit circle again, and it's a constant theme of me drawing my unit circle. You may understand the unit circle, you may even memorize the values, However, your biggest battle is really trying to uh, appease yourself and not making mistakes. Where is 330? 330 is in that position. So the tangent of 330, well, we know that it's negative because the tangent in quadrant 4 is negative. So the tangent here, I, there's another way I could, I could write that. Now, the tangent is really the y-coordinate divided by my x-coordinate. The y-coordinate at 330 is negative 1 half. The x-coordinate is root 3 over 2. So if we simplify this expression, and you can try that, and Obviously, it is negative 1 over root 3. Press pause if you're having trouble with that. Okay, hopefully you try to figure that out. Anyways, I'm going to, right, we can, we can think about this. I'm just going to expand on this. A lot of people have troubles with this. So I'm just going to evaluate this. So uh, 1 half divided by root 3 over 2, we can multiply by the reciprocal. And what we notice is that there's both a factor of 2 in the numerator and the denominator, so I can just simply cancel those out. I'm going to challenge you to look at it a different way, though, now. Why don't we both multiply the top and bottom by 2? Right? And if, if we do that, we're really just multiplying the whole thing by 1. Negative 1 half multiplied by 2 is negative 1. Root 3 over 2 divided by, or times 2, is just simply root 3 over 2. I mean, sorry, is just simply root 3. There. Much easier to wait, think about it that way. All right. Good times. Right. I'm going to delete this and create space. Now, this takes a lot of effort and a lot of practice to get the unit circle down, down well. I think it is worthwhile because it really shows you the connection um, of the patterns of the unit circle. So, tangent. First thing I'm going to do here. Criticism from the peanut gallery on the other side of the screen right now is saying, but Mr. Morin, you didn't even read the question. I know. But every question will generally result in me drawing the unit circle. Now, let me pick apart the question. Solve for theta. 
between 0 and 360, which is one revolution, that has a tangent value of negative 1 over root 3. Now, in the previous example, we wanted to find the tangent of a specific angle. So we wanted to find the tangent ratio of a specific angle. Now we want to find the angle with a specific tan, or tan ratio. It's really the, the opposite of what we just did. So I'm going to ask myself, right, and you have to really use your imagination here. Um, I'm going to ask myself, where is tangent? Negative 1 over root 3. Well, tangent is negative, we know, in quadrant 2 and 4. Hey, that's a start somewhere, right? That's very important, because otherwise, you'll get, um, if you don't do that, often people overlook a simple solution. Now, there's going to be two angles with that tangent value. Now, identify which family has a tangent value of 1 over root 3 or negative 1 over root 3. Well, that is the 30 degree family. So I'm going to draw the related angles in quadrant 2 and 4 that are related to 30 degrees. See this little picture? It works wonderful because now I know that all I have to do is go 30 degrees that way and then 30 degrees that way to get my related angles. So my quadrant 2 angle is going to be 180 minus 30 degrees. My quadrant 4 angle, I'm going to spice things up by turning it to green, is going to be 360 minus 30 degrees. So very quickly, I know that my alpha 2 is going to be 150 degrees, my alpha, or sorry, my theta 4 is going to be 330 degrees, so those are my two solutions, so therefore theta is equal to 150 degrees comma 330 degrees. And if you want, try this out in your calculator. Pick it up right now. By the way, I did that a question ex entirely without a calculator implies that exact values were at play. But let me get back to that. Now, take out your calculator and hit the tangent of 150. You'll get the approximate value, right? So, we don't need a calculator to figure this out, though. That's next lesson. All right. Whew, this one looks tough. Now, again, we're going to solve for theta between 0 and 360 degrees here. What that really means is here's my unit circle. I am going to start at 0 degrees, and I'm going to go exactly one revolution around the unit circle. Anyways, I am going to try to find the angle theta, such that when you square the sine value, it is exactly equal to 1. Now that seems like a tall order, but I'm going to start off simple by just going, well, sine squared theta is equal to 1. And we have a little bit of practice at this, don't we? We are going to solve for the trigonometric ratio. So what I can do is I can recognize, well, there's many ways of doing this, isn't there, to solving for sine theta. Number one, I can take the square root of both sides. If I take the square root of both sides, I have sine theta is equal to positive or negative one. Remember that when you take the square root of both sides, you need to consider both positive and negative roots, and that's because you are applying the root yourself. Um, so yeah, there we are. So really, what does this mean? We're looking for all angles with the sine value of 1, or all angles with the sine value of negative 1. So I'm going to go to my unit circle over here. 
what are all the angles that have a sine value of 1? Well, where is sine 1? Sine is 1 only in one place, up there. Where is sine negative 1? Right there. So what are those two positions? That's 90 degrees and 270 degrees. So therefore, theta is equal to 90 degrees or 270 degrees. I'm going to have a little box. By the way, if you ever see a little box in math like this, and I often have the long debate with myself that after every question when you're done, should this box, sometimes you'll see it as an empty box, like that. It really just means this question's done. My thoughts are done. But sometimes you'll see it as colored in. I often, often ask myself, what is better, a colored in one or a hollow one? I'll leave that up to you. So we can end my question with a solid dot or a, I mean a solid square or a hollow square. Depends what type of mood I'm in. Anyways, getting back. We're going to solve for theta, where theta is stuck between 0 and 360, so within one revolution. So I haven't even read my question, but boom, there's my unit circle. Let me read my question. I'm looking for the tangent values that are 0. Now, it's really important that you think about tangent values. Well, you ask yourself, tangent, hmm... Isn't that just slope? And I would say, absolutely, it's just slope. So let, let's maybe ask a different question, because that can be equally helpful. What does a terminal arm with no slope look like? Well, a line with no slope is just a horizontal line. So there are two places along the unit circle in which will result as a terminal arm having no slope. So here we are, right here and right here. This question is a little bit more trickier than you think though. So I just simply need to locate those positions. So I know that theta is equal to zero degrees, right? Zero, 180, Degrees. And uh, lastly, 360. So let me read the question again. I'm looking for theta between 0 and 360. So note that what I've written for above is for the restriction theta is greater than or equal to 0. Sorry, 0 is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to 360. That is, I've included my endpoints of 0 and 360, but what I've highlighted in purple over here does not include 0 or 360. So the way that this question was originally written, I should have solutions. 180. All right. This is getting delicate, isn't it? How will you do this? Through a lot of practice. Really question yourself, what is the underlying patterns? Can I make sense of all of these numbers around the unit circle? They're flying at me in all directions. My advice to you is don't memorize the unit circle. Understand it. Look at the families. Look at the patterns of sine and cosine. Come to a thought Talk it with, over with friends to see where you guys are at in your different understandings. All right. Have a great day. We'll see you again tomorrow or the next day.